um, grew up in a very normal working class background, but what happened was that we moved a lot. And so as a child, I went to 10 different schools, many different homes. And I think what I realized is I, I learned about my space and how to make my room my space very quickly. So I would be the first to be unpacked. My mother would say that she put me to bed in one corner of the room and when she woke me up in the morning, I'd rearrange my bedroom. So it's definitely been something that's been in my life for as long as I can remember. So we spend a lot of time initially getting to know the client, uh, getting to a sense of what their natural style is. Uh, we put together a kind of initial lookbook to make sure that we're interpreting what they want. And then from that, really, everything starts. We always say it always starts with the floor plans. So uh, from that, once you've put the space in there, you understand what the lighting requirements are going to be. You understand where all of the joinery and all of the different elements kind of follow on. I often say it's a bit like doing a jigsaw puzzle. You know, you get your border in first and your key corners, uh, and then you fill in your sky and your sea, and then, then you're there. So I would say if I had to describe uh, Taylor House and the look in three words, which is quite difficult for me, uh, it would be definitely colour. We're very known for using and be, not being afraid of using colour. Uh, it would be uh, proportion. That's really important for us. Everything has to be in the right proportion. It doesn't matter if it's overscaled as long as it sits in the right space. Uh, and timelessness. I think those are the three things. For us, the lighting starts right, right at the beginning. Uh, we always insist on having a great lighting designer on board. I've worked with Sally's story now for over 25 years. So we have that kind of seamless process together. She understands what we need uh, and we understand the process that she needs to go through. So it is literally from that day one of speaking with the client. It's, it's advice that we always give them. And then the minute that we've got the floor plans done is when we sit down with the, with the lighting designer to work out the key areas that we want to be highlighted. Again, how the client's going to live in the space, how they like to entertain, are they a morning or a night person, you know, the level of light. You know, I, I'm somebody who likes a lot of even light, but that's not the same for everybody and it's really understanding that. So I think lighting brings to schemes a whole range of emotions. I think living with the right level of light definitely affects your mood, so that's really key. For us, when we're working with some of the amazing finishes, for example, the um, sideboard that we've got in our furniture collection under Atelier House, you know, the reflection on that is critical. It's a really special finish, which has lots of depths and layers to it. Well, if we don't light that properly, then nobody's ever going to see that. Well, I think it's important to have decorative and architectural in the same envelope. Really good lighting is almost when you don't realise that something has been specially lit. And I think really good lighting, you can't pinpoint where it's coming from. I think if you can, then that is when you, you haven't quite got it right. Yeah, it's a really interesting topic, actually, lighting controls, because, you know, a lot of our clients, you know, they started with really simple, a dimmer switch, um, and then, of course, technology moves on at a pace and everybody gets really excited about it. And suddenly you've got controls everywhere. And then the clients pull back from that because they're like, I can't, Karen, I can't make this work. And I don't know which button to press. And, and then it's funny, the kind of then the technology actually then simplifies and it kind of settles down, which is where we are at the moment. So um, I love a really simple lighting control with, with different moods and scenes from you know, first thing in the morning, how do you want your lighting level to be, to mid-afternoon, to early evening, and to dinner, night time, and television watching. And frankly, apart from that, I think you don't need to complicate it any more than that. Um, I, we tend to really just keep those in the key areas. You don't need it in every bedroom. You don't need it, having said that, bathrooms are really important. Um, and having, we're often we're designing a lot for families, so thinking about the lighting on staircases, you know, can you leave a level of light on at night, for example, it's all of those different aspects that when we're working on some, a project for a client, that we need to make sure that they understand it first. Because I, I think what happens a lot of time is that you design the lighting and you don't confer with the client until at the end, 
and they come in and they're, they're kind of pushing switches and not understanding what's going on. So we love working um, collaboratively, as we've mentioned already, and that extends to some of the lighting that we love to put in our projects. So we were approached a couple of years ago by a wonderful company based in Charleston in the States uh, called Urban Electric. And we'd already worked with them. We commissioned them to make some bespoke pieces for us on projects. And, and we were just kind of a natural fit. And I think that is, again, where the collaborations work, is that you're like-minded in your approach and how you work on things. So we designed a beautiful collection of lights. There are four pieces in the collection. Uh, the Betty light, which is here in the studio, is our favorite. It's in my um, home, in my bedroom. So yeah, we're always working with different suppliers on, on finding beautiful lights, whether it's uh, table lamps from uh, wonderful guys at Porta Romana because we love, again, mixing uh, metals and glass and all sorts of different finishes actually just to give that kind of a different edge to something. Uh, I think on a lighting perspective we a few years ago did an amazing project which was a converted church in Knightsbridge which we worked with Sally on and that had triple height spaces. It had the most divine cherubs up on the corbels in the ceiling that Sally kind of backlit. So in the evening, they just kind of sit uh, and look down on you. And I think, you know, that had no natural windows. So it was a real challenge on the lighting side of things. Uh, it, it just it was so peaceful and harmonious in the evening. For me, that kind of stands out as, as the perfect combination between designer and, and lighting designer. That's a really good question, most challenging project. I mean, I think really the honest truth is it's my projects. Uh, we're just working on an amazing um, conversion down in the country at the moment. And I think it's almost that I know too much. There's, I know the choice that's out there. Um, I think though, having said that on the lighting design, I completely uh, let them do what they want to do. So there's an element of, of, of my controlling perfectionism going on in there that I want it to be perfect but there's also an element that when it comes to if you're working with the right professional you just let it go and you trust so you know I love being challenged and and love challenging back so we're always out you know I travel a lot for work now and that's great we've got projects all over the world and that is a great place to draw inspiration when you're doing things but for me inspiration is all around you it can be the simplest little um, nail detail on a bench that you then might incorporate on the base of a sofa you know it, it is everywhere I think as a designer you I always say I'm almost like a barcoding system you know I'm just constantly constantly taking it all in actually but uh, I love the fact there's no limit on what you can do. So when when I'm meeting with clients for the first time uh, I always say to them choose uh, choose the designer that you really have a rapport with um, don't just choose them on necessarily the projects they've done or certainly not the fees they're charging because I think you know that rapport is really important especially when you're doing somebody's home it's a very personal process that you go through I've worked on over a thousand projects I've had every type of client under the sun and I think the difference now is that for me I'm in that that stage where it's okay how can I give back to the industry and to the people that I've worked with so starting uh, the luxury business sphere which is our strategic networking group uh, a couple of years ago has been an amazing journey uh, I've connected with a lot more people than I realized that I would for me I realized that um, I love what I do because I love business as much as I love design and I love people as much as I love business and, and uh, design. Chanel is for me the biggest icon in all of that. Uh, her apartment in Paris uh, is beautiful. I would love to have collaborated and worked with her. I think it would have been, I think we are both controlling perfectionists, so that would be quite interesting and challenging at times. But I just think the way she 
did the simplest things so perfectly and beautifully well, uh, translated into interiors is, is, is kind of timeless and elegant. Well, it's interesting, we've been talking about Chanel and being an amazingly uh, inspiring designer. Um, I think the sofa that I'm sitting on at the moment, which is part of the Atelier House collection that we launched Love at Dusk last year, uh, which is a capsule collection of 13 pieces, you know, that is definitely inspired by, you know, the Chanel buttons and the, and the detailing and the seams and the, the plinth at the bottom. One of the big things that we're going to be seeing, you are already seeing on the catwalk, it hasn't come into interiors yet, which is why I say it kind of goes both ways, uh, is feathers. Um, I was wearing a fabulous feather jumper yesterday and it's going to be coming into all of the interiors. So um, yeah, do, doing the trends pieces is a great, again, is another great collaboration that we work with, with the team in the studio, but also with some of the amazing suppliers and artisans who are creating really special things. And again, it's getting out there and seeing what they're, where their inspiration is drawn from as well. So I think the most challenging room are the ones where they have, is, is where you've got a lot of glass to deal with. So if you're looking at an orangery or you're looking at a glass extension, because you've got to deal with reflection, where do you actually put the lights to light it in the first place? And I'm saying this because I'm working on a project at the moment where we've got exactly those challenges. And so as a designer, we need to be mindful of that. And, and particularly when we're working alongside the architects. So a perfect project for us is when we're appointed at the same time as the architect. I think, I think in terms of overall trends in architecture and interior design, I think everything is, is quite relaxed at the moment. I think we're going back to more eating at home, being at home, whether it's sitting in your cinema uh, or actually sitting around the dining table again. Um, I think people are, you know, we've, we've done a lot on the restaurant side of things and actually we just want to be at home chatting with the people we love uh, and spending more relaxed time. I think people want a relaxed feel when they walk in. We've got coming up the launch of uh, Luxury Business Sphere. Uh, we've got the next summit, uh, which is going to be on the 8th of October. Um, we're back again at the Gladstone Library, which was an amazing space. And I think that response from our summit last year has kind of blown me away. It was amazing and people have got a real appetite for business learnings and connecting with people and luxury goods all in the same kind of room is really exciting. Uh, we're going to be launching Atelier House um, and all of the branding that goes with that. So we're really excited. The website has been worked on at the moment. And then in terms of projects, um, we're working on a really, really special project. Uh, it's in the Cotswolds. It is going to have the largest thatch roof in Europe. Um, the clients are lovely. They're the kind of clients who, as I mentioned, are really engaged and want to know the provenance of every piece that they're selecting. So it, that's going to be really exciting and we're uh, due to finish that later this year. So for me, um, a treat night is actually being at home. <laughs> so uh, we're, you know, we're out a lot uh, entertaining clients and we're traveling a lot. So for me to come home at the end of the day, I get changed into my tracksuit and I love putting my feet up and watching a great movie, uh, a nice glass of champagne, catching up with my husband and my daughters. Uh, and for me, that just is the biggest treat. I, I'm At the weekends, I love being in the countryside. So that's how I kind of rejuvenate myself to come back for another crazy week in London. I love getting out into the fresh air and plant my feet on the grass. And I love my yoga on a Saturday morning. That is kind of the reset button.